And always try spinning counterclockwise so your angular momentum slows the Earth's rotation. <laughs> <laughs> it's time for some more XKCD. Specifically, can you drive west to lengthen the sunset? Probably not by much. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Tyler Fulce. I'm a nuclear engineer, a little over 10 years of experience in the commercial nuclear power industry. From engineering to operations to emergency response. I don't want to know everything there is nuclear, but I can certainly share some out. Who asks, what's the longest possible sunset you can experience while driving, assuming you're obeying the speed limit and driving on paved roads? Ooh, giving us some restrictions here. Okay, that's gonna quite severely hamper us. But in nuclear engineering, we're used to having constraints, so... Speed limits are analogous to core thermal limits. You don't have any friends if you exceed those. Both for reactor power output and for reactor heat distributions. To start, we have to define what we mean by sunset. For the purpose of our question, sunset starts the instant the sun touches the horizon and ends when it disappears completely. Which means that for us, this is not a sunset. This is also not a sunset. Okay. This is definitely not a sunset. I like that they're getting the boundaries clear though. It's the first thing you do before you model a system. You define your boundary conditions. Because after all, without that, your model or your answer to this question is complete and utter garbage. Same thing we do in reactor kinetics. You define what criticality is, or what prompt criticality is for that matter, before you calculate how long it takes the neutron population to double. What's interesting though is the primary reactor operator during a real reactor startup is who actually calls the reactor critical. Not the supervisor with the SRO license, not the reactor engineer, it's the primary reactor operator. After all, they're the one who's running the thing. Just like the captain is the person on the airplane who tells you when to fasten your seatbelt. Or the driver of the car lets you know when it's safe to get out of the car. And no matter what happens here, this will not be a sunset. <laughs> what? <laughs> You just brought the sun to Earth and you cracked it. If the sun touches the horizon and then it lifts back up, the sunset is disqualified. For a sunset to count, the sun also can't just disappear behind a nearby hill. It That's a good point. That would be the equivalent of defining a reactor shutdown as in someone turning off all the lights in the control room. Or, simply, or worse, someone turning off all of your radiation detectors. It needs to set behind the idealized horizon. Otherwise, if you could use arbitrary obstacles like that, you could cause a sunset whenever you wanted just by hiding behind a rock. At the equator, yes. an average sunset is just over two minutes long. Sunset being shielding from the sun's radiation. In places like London, England, it can take between three and five minutes. At London's latitude, the Earth's surface is moving from west to east at about a thousand kilometers per hour. So if you fly west in a commercial airliner, you can experience an arbitrarily long sunset. Or at least, can until you run out of fuel 15 or 20 hours in. <laughs> yep, you can catch up with it in a plane. It's kind of like watching neutron flux flatten out. The shallower the angle, the slower the crossing, right? So yeah, the closer you get to the poles, the slower your sunset slides past. But Michael's question was about driving to extend the sunset. Intuitively, it seems like we probably want to be as far north or maybe south as possible. Sure. The closer we are to the pole, the easier it is to keep up with the sun. Yeah, you don't have the advantage that you have when you fly, where, as they said, you can essentially achieve rotational geosynchrony at ground level, or in other words, making yourself a very confused pilot with terrible fuel economy. And I guess if you were to pause the sunset indefinitely at the equator, you'd have to go supersonic at a relatively low altitude. Very fuel consumption, and I think you'd also break a few laws in the process. Unfortunately, there are no paved roads anywhere no. near either pole. The closest road that qualifies is probably in Longyearbyen on the island of Svalbard, Norway. Yeah, that, that paved road restriction really gets you here. The equivalent of doing, of setting an arbitrarily low power limit, which you do occasionally perform during a reactor startup. There's low power physics testing, which you're on the order of microwatts to milliwatts, but what you're doing is you're testing the rods, is you're testing all of your control and shutdown rods to validate the calculations that the reactor engineers and the third party they hired estimated when they designed your core. But, and the reason why you do it at low power is because you move your ro the rods pretty far up and down in the core. And if you try to do that anywhere in the power range, that is to say anywhere above 1% power, any anomaly that would be detected there could have potential adverse 
neutron flux and heat flux imbalances on the rest of the reactor core, which is why you do it at low power. Also, rods have more of an effect at low power because they're essentially the only things controlling the reaction. You don't necessarily have to worry about your moderator temperature coefficient because at that low power, you don't have to worry about temperature effects on your reactor because at that low power, not much heat is being generated from fission. It's going to be dominated by your reactor coolant pump heat. But yeah, if you're not as far north, you can't, you don't get to experience the 24 hour twilight that's right at the pole. The longest sunset there lasts just under an hour. Although it doesn't matter if you drive west because the road's too short for your movement to make much difference. Sure, yeah. You probably end up just taking it into a glacier or something. In general, driving west to keep up with the sun isn't a viable strategy. Even at the northernmost tip of mainland Norway, you'd have to travel at about half the speed of sound to keep up with the sun. Luckily, yeah, that's way faster than any speed limit ever. There's a better approach. If you're in northern Scandinavia on a day when the sun just barely sets and then rises again, the day-night line moves northwest, then slows, reverses, and heads back to the southwest. Okay. To get a long sunset, the strategy is simple. Sit in your car until the sun first touches the horizon, which means the day-night line is about to pass you. Then drive north to stay a little ahead of the line as long as you can, which will keep the sun in the process of setting. Then you turn and drive south across the line into nighttime. Basically a load follow strategy. I've heard this line referred to as the Terminator line, actually. So trying to phase match the Terminator. That definitely sounds sci-fi. But you could potentially do load follow operations in a nuclear power plant. It's just kind of clunky. And that's because you have to worry about xenon buildup. So whenever you lower reactor power you're going to get a peak of xenon, which is a fission product that if you're not at steady state, is going to rob you of neutrons to sustain your fission reaction. It's also referred to as a reactor poison. So you're going to get a spike of xenon after you down power. There's a good rule of thumb is it's the square root of the percentage that you down powered in hours. That is to say, if you cut power from 100% to 50%, you're going to get a xenon peak in about seven hours, which is usually going to figure out to the next crew that's coming on shift. And you're going to need to find ways to add reactivity, that is to say, withdraw control rods or dilute the reactor coolant system, that is to say, get rid of some of the boric acid in order to maintain power at 50%. That is one potential disadvantage of nuclear plants. Now, there are subsystems in some nuclear plants that are designed to be more fuel efficient with your dilutions that is to say use a lot less water but ultimately it's not the best for a base load system where your goal is to get up to 100 percent power and just to stay there for 18 to 24 months but yes essentially this operation of following the line is a form of load following Ran a search for long sunset driving paths using some Pi FM code and GPS traces of Norwegian highways, right. and I found that the strategy works about equally well anywhere inside the Arctic Circle. Over How much would you get out of this? A couple hours, maybe? For a wide range of routes and driving speeds, the longest sunset I could come up with was consistently about 95 minutes, which is okay. It wasn't that far off. Interesting. About 40 minutes longer than the longest sunset you can get in Long Yerbjörn. But if you okay. are stuck on Svalbard and you want to make the sunset or sunrise last a little. That's not bad. That's a sizable increase over the equatorial baseline. Longer. You can always try spinning counterclockwise, so your angular momentum slows the Earth's rotation. <laughs> <laughs> to give you a sense of scale, slowing the Earth's rotation by about one nanosecond would require about a quadrillion joules, which is a similar energy yield to a large nuclear weapon. And keep in mind, you're applying that force directionally to Earth's angular momentum vector. In other words, this would be the equivalent of saying, I want to go ahead and raise my nuclear power plant's thermal efficiency by walking up to the turbine deck and blowing on the turbine to speed it up. It's cute, but it won't change your grid frequency. It's cute, but it won't help. It's true that it will only add an imperceptibly small fraction of a nanosecond, but it might be worth it. Oh, that's sweet. It's a thought that counts, right? I mean, ultimately, it's proportional integral control logic, trying to match your rate of change to the system, that being the Earth, rate of change, keeping it all in harmony.
Then again, I don't think your partner would appreciate if you spam with the energy of a thermonuclear bomb. Thanks so much for the recommendation, and thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time.